Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlock big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we'll unlock the book This Explains Everything, Deep, Beautiful, and Elegant Theories of How the World Works. This book is a collection of discussions surrounding the question of how the world works. The question was raised by a top scientific platform the Edge community. Those who join these profound conversations are hailed as the brightest minds in their respective fields. These include biology, neurology, philosophy, cosmology, physics, and computer science. In an article published in The Observer, a communication theorist at the University of Cambridge described Edge as the world's smartest website. This online platform gathers together many influential contemporary scholars, scientists, and thinkers. In this community, some of the smartest people in the world share ideas on online forums. They discuss a wide range of subjects, such as mysticism, intellectual honesty, the Anthropocene, and naive realism. But do you know why Brockman the editor of this book founded this community? It was through inspiration he received from his friend James Lee Byers. Byers was a philosopher and artist who once said, I can answer the question, but am I bright enough to ask it? As it's true that it's not easy to ask a good question, Byers came up with the idea of establishing the World Question Center. His plan was to invite the 100 brightest minds in the world to come together in one room and have them ask each other the same questions they were asking themselves. After Brockman published his first book in 1969, Byers invited him for a conversation about wisdom, language, and the world's top scientists. Their dialogue was then published by the World Question Center in 1971. Ever since, Brockman shared Byers' idea and has never stopped trying to gather the greatest minds in the world. As such, Brockman founded the Reality Club in 1981, which started to bring extraordinary people together. He wrote an essay titled The Emerging Third Culture in 1991, and then a book called The Third Culture, Beyond the Scientific Revolution published in 1995. In both of them, he explained the concept of the third culture, pointing out that outstanding people, including scientists, artists, philosophers, entrepreneurs, and so forth, were all representatives of the third culture. On that account, in 1991, Brockman established the third culture as the core concept of his intellectual community. And in 1997, the Reality Club went online and was officially rebranded as Edge. Today, a group of remarkable minds gather together in Brockman's online community. Every year, they answer a thought-provoking and interesting annual question through their own professional perspectives, showing us new ways of seeing the beauty of the world. The book we are talking about today, This Explains Everything is one of the Edge Question series. The annual question of the year the book was published was, what is your favorite deep, elegant, or beautiful explanation of the world? Through their answers, we'll get to know the perspectives of the brightest minds and the relations between different fields of study. We can also get a glimpse into seeing how the world through scientists' eyes is different from that of our own. Following up next, we'll unlock the major content of this book in two sections. Part 1, Scientists' Innovative Ways of Thinking. Part 2, Intersections of Different Disciplines. All right, let's start with scientists' innovative ways of thinking and see how they have changed our interpretation of the world. The fundamental reason why great minds are remarkable is because they do not remain idle, satisfied, nor in their comfort zone. They keep moving forward, upgrading conventional ideas, and updating their repertoire of knowledge. If someone is always thinking and ready to absorb new knowledge within this changing era, they will surely become a leader. First, let's take a look at how Einstein stepped beyond boundaries and made revolutionary contributions to the study of photons, bringing him the 1921 Nobel Prize. First, let's briefly explain what a photon is. In 1905, Einstein proposed a then-controversial idea that light consists of energy quanta. At the time, there was a well-accepted theory in the scientific community that contradicted this. To understand the then-conventional idea, 
imagine a sealed container being heated. As the temperature on each wall inside is not yet the same, the four walls emit and absorb radiation simultaneously. After some time, there will be an equal distribution of radiation inside the container. Max Planck and many other scientists at the time explained this phenomenon even using the idea of quantization. However, Einstein went a step further and studied how uniform the distribution of the radiation was inside the container. Through this, he broke the period's boundaries and took scientific thinking one step further. Though Einstein made mistakes in many of his subsequent experiments, many physicists still expressed their support for him. They argued that the occasional mistakes committed by Einstein in his speculations were fine, as without the audacious act of taking the occasional risk, no real innovation can be made in science. As such, compared to always acquiring precise results, a scientist's experimental and audacious mindset are of even more importance to the progress of the world and the beauty of science. By breaking through the limitations of the mind, scientists are naturally on the cutting edge of science, just as pioneers who are exploring the beauty of this world. When speaking of innovation, we can't ignore our mysterious universe. And to understand it, great astronomers gradually and continuously upgrade their ways of thinking in order to reveal its secrets. According to physicists and astronomers, our universe came into existence from a singularity that is smaller than an atom. After a certain point, the Big Bang erupted. Within a tiny fraction of a second, the universe expanded to its approximate current size with numerous galaxies being generated. This process is called inflation, a pioneering theory in physical cosmology. During this process, the expansion of the universe doubled not by days or hours, but almost instantly. This process even followed the law of conservation of energy and the general theory of relativity. That is to say that everything in the universe was created from almost nothing. As hot plasma of the universe diluted and cooled, its constituent particles gradually coalesced into nuclei, atoms, molecules, stars, and galaxies. Until now, inflation has been an explanation examined by scientists. To Max Tegmark, a physicist at MIT, the hallmark of a profound explanation is that it answers more than what you initially ask. That is to say, even if your question is as simple as what is inflation, a considerable amount of knowledge from other fields is needed to answer it. Because inflation is an innovative theory in science, to answer any question surrounding this theory, people need to embark on new explorations and further progress. Of course, such theories abound in our scientific world. Deep new theories such as the black hole, the holographic universe, and the quantum foam have answered one question after another. They allow us to unfold more secrets of our world. Many astronomers believe that we actually live in a multiverse. The actual architecture of the universe may go further beyond our own conventional structures of time and space. Moreover, the universe that we can observe might be only the tiniest fragment of what was created by the Big Bang. Further, our Big Bang might as well be only an insignificant one among of countless others. Take the analogy of the snowflake. We all know that there are no identical snowflakes in the world, because the form of snowflakes is determined by the properties and shape of water molecules. As snowflakes are highly sensitive to humidity and temperature, each snowflake grows into its own unique pattern. A similar hypothesis can be applied to the study of the universe. Maybe there are numerous distinct universes beyond the one in which we currently live in, and we just haven't discovered them yet. Undeniably, in certain aspects, such theories and ways of thinking may be arbitrary. Nevertheless, many scientists have produced examples from their research, showing us to not to set boundaries on our own minds, as the world might be more complex and infinite than what we see now. Of course, exploration of the universe has never been an exclusive privilege for physicists and astronomers. People from other fields can also touch on this branch of science. For example, Kevin Kelly, the editor-at-large of the famous magazine Wired made his exploration of the universe from the perspective of the human composition. He explains that each of us are made from stars. That's because most atoms in each of our bodies were built up out of smaller particles produced on the furnaces of exploded stars. 
it is only our primordial hydrogen atoms that were born before stars. In other words, through calculation of our cosmic composition, we are 90% remnants of star. Isn't that amazing? These examples which we have just talked about reflect scientists' innovative ways of thinking. From what was shown, of primordial importance was to break the boundaries of conventional thinking. That's how one can always be at the forefront of science. Of course, the book also mentions several other key points which we should utilize in order to keep our own ways of thinking updated. Let's take a quick look at one of them. This one underlines that we should identify abstraction traps. French sociologist and philosopher Jean Baudrillard proposed a prized concept called the procession of the simulacra. To understand it, think of the math symbols that we learned when we were very young. Those symbols are an abstraction of the real objects and our real lives in order to make it more convenient for us to calculate. Besides math, the money that we use every day is also a simulation of the value of objects. When you buy a burger, the money that you hand to the cashier is an abstract simulation of the value of the food. This concept can help us understand to what extent people can simulate the real world. However, as the phenomenon of simulation can make people more imaginative, it also gradually makes us interested only in the simulacra, instead of the real world. Let's take the map for example to understand this concept. We often use maps to describe the world. When something happens on a certain part of the planet, we refer to a map in order to talk about it. At this point, the map has become a simulacrum, a representation of the real world. We no longer pay attention to the reality of those places, but mistake everything on the map for the reality. It's similar to someone addicted to video games who cares for nothing in the real world and searches for their self-value through the game. This happens not only in games. In the real world, money is the simulation of the value of objects. Through this, many merchants have used that concept to rip off consumers. They exaggerate people's material needs and let the abstraction take hold of real life. Things like that happen often. One negative effect of this is that we get further away from the true essence, hurt by illusions, and abused by other people. For instance, our labor and foods are things that actually have a value. However, when we speak of them, what we ask is how much is it to hire this person? Or how much is it to buy this food? People are already accustomed to using money to evaluate most things. That's what the procession of the simulacra means. In our daily lives, we can follow some steps to identify an illusion. For example, when we see a brand running a sales promotion, we can first ask ourselves, what is the value of the object itself? Then we look at the representation of its value, which is the promotion. The key is to look at the two separately and not to be fooled and seduced by the representative illusion. Only by doing so can we escape from the trap created by the simulacra and see the real world. This concludes the first part. In this part, we talked about scientists' innovative ways of thinking. Through them, we can see that in order to keep our minds up to date, the most critical thing to do is to break the boundaries of our minds. Besides this, we must also know how to identify the abstraction traps. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.